Osteopetrosis by Dave Duvell and Caitlin Jago. Osteopetrosis, named for the German radiologist Dr. Albers Schoenberg, is defined as a disease of dysfunctional osteoclasts that leads to an increase in overall bone density. This is a picture of Dr. Albers Schoenberg, who discovered the disease in 1904. This disease has three different forms which affects its severity. These forms are an autosomal recessive infantile form, an intermediate autosomal recessive form or marble bone disease, and an autosomal dominant adult form. Osteopetrosis has not been found to have a gender predilection and its incidence and prevalence are not well agreed upon in literature. Some sources say 1 in 100,000 to 500,000, while other sources give prevalence based on the form of the disease being considered. The prevalence of the autosomal recessive and dominant forms are present in 1 in 250,000 and 1 in 20,000 respectively. The age of presentation also depends on the form being considered, with the autosomal recessive form presenting during infancy, the intermediate form during childhood, most often in the first decade, and the autosomal dominant form between ages 20 and 30. For reasons unknown, Costa Rica has a higher incidence of osteopetrosis. The photograph on the right is a famous display in England showing a case of osteopetrosis. Notice how this typifies the so-called marble bone appearance. Generalized symptoms of osteopetrosis include bone pain, loss of vision and hearing, and oftentimes facial paralysis. Signs associated with the disease are fractures, delayed tooth eruption, dental anomalies, increased susceptibility to bacterial infections, and osteomyelitis. Severity of the signs and symptoms depends on the form of the disease under consideration. The picture on the right depicts how an increase in bone growth in the cranial vault could compress neurovascular canals, including those containing the cranial nerves. In the autosomal recessive form of osteopetrosis, increased bone density due to lack of osteoclast function can cause obliteration of bone marrow, compression and paralysis of cranial nerves, and difficulty fighting infections such as pneumonia. Prognosis for these patients is poor, and most do not survive the first decade of life. The intermediate form, or marble bone disease, has similar neurologic manifestations as the autosomal recessive form, but oftentimes to a less debilitating degree. Impaired vision and hearing can be experienced along with the effects on the dentition such as a delay in eruption, oligodontia, dental anomalies, and enamel hypoplasia. Increased bone density may have more effects on the mandible than what is experienced in other forms of osteopetrosis. This form of the disease does not affect mortality and therefore patients with marble bone disease will still need dental treatment throughout their lives. The autosomal dominant form is oftentimes not discovered, as nearly one half of cases are asymptomatic and less aggressive, with discovery of the disease occurring at the time of a pathologic fracture. When the cases become severe, bone pain and neurologic disturbances may occur. Radiographic findings of this disease are tough to categorize via the lesion acronym due to its systemic nature. Location is generalized and should be apparent in most facial bones. Edges are well-defined because the bones affected are well-defined. The shape descriptor is not applicable as this is systemic in nature and the internal structure is sclerotic and vastly radio-opaque.
which is evident from radiograph on the right. From a dental perspective, the most affected structures are the inferior alveolar nerve canal and cortical bone trabeculation. Teeth may be displaced. Number and size are not applicable as it is systemic in nature. Here's a nice radiograph showing the diffuse radio opacity of osteopetrosis. The sagittal view perfectly depicts the sclerosis that can happen in the calvaria. These are some other radiographs showing the systemic effects of the disease, which in this case are apparent on the phalanges and tibia and fibula. Differential interpretations of osteopetrosis includes other osteosclerotic bone diseases. Paget's disease of the bone is included in the differentials because of bone and neurological pain involvement. Notice the appearance in the radiograph on the right of generalized cottonwool appearance of bones. Along with this, patients will have elevated alkaline phosphatase levels, which will distinguish this disease from osteopetrosis. Acromegaly involves hyperplasia and ossification of bone, which may cause paresthesia and feebleness that could be mistaken for osteopetrosis. It can be removed from the differentials based on blood tests showing elevated growth hormone levels. Finally, hyperparathyroidism is associated with bone pain, headaches, and other neurological changes. Radiographic findings of Brown's tumors and radiolucencies, along with increased alkaline phosphatase levels, will differentiate hyperparathyroidism from osteopetrosis. The course of treatment largely depends on the severity of the case. Most times the patient has mild symptoms and treatment is supportive in nature. In more severe cases, however, a marrow transplant or an osteoclast stimulating drug may be beneficial. From a dental perspective, it is important to recognize the inherent risk of osteomyelitis. Thus, excellent hygiene and preventative measures like premedication and root canal therapy instead of extractions may be necessary. If uncomfortable with treatment of such a patient, referral to a hospital setting may be appropriate. Furthermore, if a patient presents with radiographic findings that suggest osteopetrosis, referral to a physician for blood tests is also appropriate. This radiograph on the right depicts a case of osteomyelitis associated with osteopetrosis, which obviously can affect dental treatment. And finally, here are some key points of osteopetrosis. Osteopetrosis is a disease of non-functioning osteoclasts that cause an increased density of bone. Symptoms include bone pain and cranial nerve compression. Signs include easily fractured bones and increased susceptibility to infections. The histological findings on the right depict a mouse model with normal bone trabeculation D and F and induced osteopetrosis in E and G. Notice the fibrotic marrow cavity on the right, which can lead to decreased hematopoiesis and thus an increased risk of infection. Radiographically, osteopetrosis will appear with diffuse sclerosis and obvious radio opacity. The most commonly affected structures on a dental radiograph will be the inferior alveolar nerve canal and cortical bone trabeculation. The radiograph on the right depicts how bone trabeculation can be affected, most notably on the posterior right mandible. Finally, in most cases, the best course of treatment will be supportive in nature. Here are the resources for our project, and here are our image credits.